Hello everyone again, this is Dr. Martin Wucher and we are going to go to the second part of the Coronavirus Namibia series, which consists of three parts. The first one is background, you probably have watched it. The second one is what you can do at home. And the third one is what your doctor might be able to do for you in Namibia or Southern Africa or then wherever. So, once again a warning, this is not medical treatment. If you want to have medical treatment, specifically you need the guidance of a qualified doctor. We cannot do it in this way, so please <clears throat> remember that this is for prevention and for information only. Yes, the picture says it all. You have got a friend that went to America, he flew back to Europe, stayed there for a week, went to some nice beer festivals, had great parties, and then he got on a plane and for his 10 or 11 hours flew down to Wintook and he got out, you, rest, you picked him up at the airport and of course what you do when you see a friend, you give him a hug, if it's your girlfriend or your wife, you probably give her a kiss and then he's brought to other mates and you also shake their hands and then you load everything in the car and you start driving to winter. So touching people with Corona, inhaling what they exhale is the way to get infected. The tricky part with Corona is it takes two to 14 days to show up. We call this the incubation period. That's the period where you have the virus, it's cooking inside you, but it doesn't really show any symptoms yet. So if a guy is healthy and the guy has got no fever, he might have the virus already. And that's the tricky one. And also that is the questionable one. If you measure the temperature with the infrared thermometer at the airport, Yes, he might have a fever, but the fever might be from something else. Then he's positive and everybody goes into a panic stage. Or he has got no fever, then everybody is happy. Meanwhile, the virus might be there already. Anyway, this is background. It's not to get you up into panic. I just want to show, uh, explain how these things work. The truth is... All of us are exposed to viruses 24-7 virtually. We live with them. Our body has learned to handle them. And in most, most, most cases, we come out tops. And in fact, our immune system gets to know them, gets to recognize them, and we will have a basic immunity or defense systems. Viral transmission has to go through three steps. The first one is... The little droplets that somebody sneezes out, somebody coughs out, they're in the air, they go up to four or five meters. In this specific virus, apparently it has been designed, now that's the one story, to transmit further away. In other words, it has a further reach. And in that case, you can say anything three to five meters. If a guy's got a really potent cough or sneeze, you might inhale it. The next one, and those are the most important surfaces, are our inside of our hands. And I say inside of the hands because the inside of the hand is the thing, is the surface that touches everything that we handle, everything that we do to other people. It's just our universal tool. It's like our Leatherman tool. And then, of course, direct touch. If you give people a hug, um, you pick somebody up, you pick some of their utensils up, the, you might pick their bag up, their, they might have sat and sneezed on their hanky, which was a thin paper hanky, so the virus particles on their, are on their hand, they walk out the airport door and they carry their, their bag and you are helpful and you pick up the bag, so now the virus particles are on your hand. And so then they're on your steering wheel, they're on your purse, on your uh, wallet and if you're not used to this sort of thinking it's a scary story let me assure you it's normal life it's nothing out of the ordinary our body can handle this sort of stuff 
Right, so that comes to the second step. When we think of limiting infections, we talk about decontamination. Now, in medical terms, sterilization means everything that's alive has been killed. That means everything's dead, no fungi, no bacteria, no viruses are alive, and you can virtually be assured that this is a sterile surface. Now, for everything that has to do with corona, we will never get there. We can get to disinfection or, let's say, decontamination. In other words, disinfection is reducing the viral particles, reducing the, the pathogenic load, making them less. The distance between people is crucial. And this is the whole secret. Um, in fact, what you see here is probably the biggest secret that the Chinese have used. They have got a strong government system. They've got very disciplined citizens. And in that way, they implemented draconian measures and they basically told everybody to stay at home. Now, if you look at Namibia, Distance and time is not a problem with us. All we need to do, and I'm proposing here, that if Namibia, say we get into a state of having 100 coronavirus victims here or cases, all we would need to do now, this is just a, this is just a nice story, all we need to go, do, we go to the farms, we go to the number, wherever, and each of us, goes and picks a bush 50 meters apart and we stay there for three or four weeks and guess what there will be no more pandemic in Namibia because in that time the virus will be sorted out in your immune system if you're healthy <clears throat> and you will not be able to infect another person in other words you are breaking the chain you are basically stalling the whole process it's like a felt fire if there's no grass close to each other you will stop the fire. So using the felt fire analogy, we know very well in Namibia, the years that we've got lots of grass with many um, pollen of grass next to each other, they're all dry, they're all in the right situation, we've got a bit of wind, the, you will battle to kill a fire. But if it's thin, if they spread out, if there's dry ground between them, it won't even start. So Yes, what can we do? This video is all about that. Um, buying new fillies is not just the answer. It's not even half the answer. So let's just have a look at what's important. Your knowledge and then, of course, your actions are really the most important keys in this whole game. Um, I don't think our doctors have got all the answers. Um, doctors at this stage very much rely on medications. They also very much rely on some hopeful uh, vaccination programs which are supposedly coming. Quite honestly, we don't know when it's going to happen, how much it's going to cost. We don't even know how effective they'll be. And I'm quite sure that they might not be that effective because this virus, um, coronaviruses have been known to change very, very rapidly. So if you have a serum or you have a vaccination for one a year later or six months later it might not work so your best bet is your body you see in this graph we've got certain areas one is your environment then it's your four walls with your family and and loved ones then it's your body and of course then in the end and that's where your virus gets to to replicate is inside yourself so what can we do first of all we do what the chinese and the Italians, the Chinese have done, and the Italians are trying to do, you try and isolate people, and you put distance between them, even if it's just a physical wall. In Namibia, we don't need physical walls, we just need to make it 10 meters. Now, in practical terms, that is maybe a problem for the big cities. Um, the crowded areas of the low-income areas are the biggest concern. Then, of course, is the whole story of washing hands and soap and all this sort of stuff. That's common sense. That is normal um, viral procedures. Um, it should actually be normal. But for us that work in a healthcare environment all the time, it's like second nature. 
you are geared, your mind is set to it. So there's nothing new with one and two. They work, they are effective, and they are reasonably cheap. And anyone can do them if you put your mind to it. What is more exciting is the stuff that I'll share with you in this video. And this is why I think this video is something special. Because it's put, it will put a lot of focus on the untold stories, on our immune system, on what you can do in your body, and also specific, very simple, um, safe antiviral um, strategies and nutritions. And in the end, and this will be in the third video, I will share with you what your doctor can possibly do if the pawpaw hits the fan. In other words, if you get really sick and you now have the idea that you have got respiratory distress, you can't breathe properly, your lungs are all pulling, you know, seizing up, and you want to go and see a doctor, as you have heard on the news already, don't just walk into a hospital because either if you have the virus, you will infect a lot of other people. If you don't have the virus, you might get it there. So please, and this is the Namibian directive, contact your healthcare provider or facility before you make contact. And this is really to keep the distance and the isolation in place as much as possible, even while you are getting treatment. Right, let's have a look. So how do we go about this? How do we get going? I've got, say, seven modules here. Why do I put the gut in the middle? The gut has to be healthy, as healthy as possible. Because in your gut, which has got a surface of two tennis courts, now this is a story for another day, but ex except it for today, it's huge and it contains 80% of your immune system. Let me repeat it. Your gut wall and your intestines contain 80% of your immune system. So if that is working well and if it's healthy, then of course you have got a fantastic police. It'll work and this virus will have very, very, very little chance of ever getting to what he, where he wants to be. Second is the air. Make sure the air is clean. That is pollution. That is people coughing and sneezing and did I say farting? No, not really. Around you, you inhale that stuff, and with the air, you inhale everything that is inside the air. Yes, the surfaces. The bench that you sit on, the handle that you open on the door, your car handles, your car door handles, the steering wheel, the the gear lever, the whoever. And this becomes especially important if you go to public spaces. This is our number one defense mechanism, and that is our immunity. It's a defense mechanism against cancer, against other bacteria, against viruses, and it works 24-7 in different people with different effectiveness. Quite honestly, the immunity of people in our rural areas very often is much, much better than the ones in the city dwellers. So if you want to go to the safest place, Go to a remote place and stick it out for four weeks and the whole thing will be over for you. You will be fine. Your lifestyle. Yes, of course, your lifestyle influences everything. We will see a summary later on. And the lifestyle influences your gut, your immunity, and the way your body handles this whole lot. Supplements. You will find if you go along and you speak to your doctor about this video or your mates, you will find a lot of people just laughing at you and say, supplements, what can they do? It's just yellow we. It's just peeing money down the do. They are useless. Let me assure you, 10 years ago, I thought the same. But I spent thousands of hours, thousands and thousands of articles later, looking at what supplements, vitamins, minerals, and all these things can do. They are incredible. In fact, you cannot live without them. Long ago, we got them through our food. Today, that doesn't work anymore, so we have to get them elsewhere. And this is part of this um, video series. Antivirals. Now, if your body is struggling, in number six, I will show you some substances that are specifically geared to kill a virus. 
Now, those are some of them are plant substances. And remember, we are mammals. Are we are living cells. We've got eukaryotic cells. Now we have to defend ourselves against viruses, but plants do exactly the same thing. They have got viruses that tackle them the whole time. So like we have got immunity, the antivirals that we use as humans are in plants. And many of our ancient traditional cultures have known that, they have learned that, and they had incredible knowledge on what to use when. So natural remedies have got many, many antiviral properties and we can use them to great effect today. Good, I've indicated that air is important and we'll take it as step one. So when I say get into fresh air, get outside, get into the sun for a couple of minutes, 10, 15 minutes every day. Uh, sunrise, sunset is a good time. And then of course, a short time, 10, 15 minutes at lunchtime. It resets your internal biological clock. It gives you a little bit of ultraviolet B, which makes vitamin D in your skin. So take off your shirt, sit in the sun for 10 minutes at lunchtime. It'll improve your body like crazy. So here's my friend. He loves me. He's just come from overseas. He had some business in China and now he comes along and he says, oh, I caught a little flu and then he goes crazy next to you and you just want to run. Long ago, um, it was, you know, a snake spraying at you. Today, it's your mate spraying at you. So stay away from sprays. If somebody coughs, please cough into your sleeve like you've seen on the social media or into an absorbent material. It can be material and it's really just to catch the bulk of the droplets. If you wear a mask and you sneeze, you will understand that this whole spray that's pointed forward has to go somewhere. It's not going to disappear. So if you have a mask that you have tightened tightly around your mouth, that spray will be directed backwards. It will be sprayed up into your nose, into your eyes, around your face, into your hair. It's going to be everywhere. So yes, if you're sick and you have a spray, if you have a mask on, I am not sure that the mask will actually help. Quite honestly, I think a big fluffy cloth or a bed piece of paper is better. You cough into that, you sneeze into it, and then you dispose of it. Um, it's really that simple. You have to realize having a mask, you really like, you know, being in a room and you have to inhale your own spray the whole time. So it might just be that your body is trying to get rid of the spray and you get it back into the body. Stay away from air travel. Yes, we've heard that. Why is that so crucial? Because if you're in an airplane and you go to 35,000 feet, you would die if there wouldn't be a system that is closed and compressed. So what do they do? They close the door. As the air pressure drops, as you go up, the air pressure inside the, in the airplane gets pumped up. So it stays the same as if you were at 8,000 feet. It's not quite like on the ground, but it's also not like 35,000 feet. So long story short, they use the air that you breathe and they recycle it to a certain extent. Number one. Number two, if they wouldn't take out the water, the whole windows would mist up and you would sit like in a in a sauna by the end of the flight. The, the liquid would be dripping off the roof. So what do they do? They remove the water, the condensed water, and they pump it out. <clears throat> and that makes the air in the aeroplane very dry. So now we've seen already in the earlier video that if your mucous membranes get dry, your chances of infection increase manifold. So you've got dry air with mixed air from other people and so your chances of inhaling what they've been exhaling becomes much, much bigger. Normally, aeroplanes have got filters. They've got micro filters. They've got carbon filters, which are supposed to catch these little particles. But as we all know, when an airline tries to save money and when they basically bankrupt, you can imagine the last thing that they worry about is a filter. So stay at home. 
open your windows, keep the place nice and ventilated, get fresh air and go into the bush, go to the farm. That's a really safe place. Right. So let's go to number two, which is the hygiene. And that starts with becoming aware of what you touch. So where you put, especially the inside of your palm, is very, very important. That might be your face. That might be public spaces. Now on the top left, <clears throat> it looks like a train station, but it's like a, a public toilet. On the, on the right here, you've got a public toilet with a different, in a different cultural environment. And if we look at these pictures, we are quite okay with the one on the left normally. And we, we probably horrified with the one on the right. Um, if you're absolutely 100% honest and if you cut out your emotions and you assume that the person going to, to the right side of this picture, they will pull down their pants and they'll squat and they won't touch anything else and they'll do their thing and they'll get up and they will walk off. I can promise you the chances of them picking up something horrible in that place is less than what they do here on the other side. Here on the fancy side, they probably have to touch a handle, they have to push a lever. Um, you can see the taps here are automatic taps, which is fantastic. But you can see on the dryers there, um, or the paper dispenser or soap dispenser, whatever it is there, you have a little push button. Now, if you walk in there and you've got a contaminated hand and you push the button, that button is contaminated. And the next one is going to go onto that will also be contaminated. You can now say, okay, this is soap. I'm going to wash it and then go to the air dryer. Remember, the story is not, is not new. The air dryers take the air from the room, blow it over your hand, recirculate it. So whichever left over bugs are on your fingers will be recirculated. Um, this is pretty hygienic, but still you will be exposed to viruses. So if you walk around public spaces, imagine that you have a handful that you've just dipped in a bucket of blood. And now you want to make it, if it's your hand or somebody else's, doesn't matter. Now they open a door, they, they grab onto a steering wheel, they grab onto a bag and uh, they grab onto a hair bag. They pull back a chair in the restaurant, whatever. These spaces are all full of bugs. And it's okay. Your body knows it. It can handle it if the immune system is cool. Let's take an example. This pretty young lady in the bus. First thing is, she's holding on to the place that is made for holding on. Now, imagine in a day of normal transit in a place like um, Tokyo or New York City or something. How many people would hold on to that? So, And then what does she do? When she gets out the, the bus, she will take that same hand and she will pull off her headphones. So now the bugs that were on the handle are now on her headphones. And from there, she goes home. She, she sticks her headphones away. She goes to the basin and she wipes off some of her makeup. Okay, Or she wipes on some of her makeup. So now potential virus particles that have been on the on the handle in the in the bus are now all over her face and maybe she gives her boyfriend a kiss or a hug and the poor fellow doesn't know what's happened so yes this is how it works distance yes from one passenger to the other if you in a in a tramway you are right on top of each other the time you are there for a short time then the next guy comes, the next time. There is no way that the viruses have got time to die. And that apparently on plastic and stainless steel can be up to eight hours, maybe even a day. So if you had to leave this bus for a week somewhere alone, yes, maybe the viruses would be dead. We don't know 100%. But time is another issue. So... Cleaning surfaces is just common sense. And normal household cleaners, cleaners, all the stuff you use to clean the toilet will work very well. Some of the cheapest and most effective 
cleaning agents or bleach like chick or Milton's in our environment. Then hydrogen peroxide, you can buy it at the pharmacy. It's aggressive. You can buy it in bigger bottles, industrial. It's very aggressive. And if you look at this fellow at the bottom, he's actually peroxide his hair. So there will be no coronavirus in his hair at this stage or after he's been treating his hair. This is what hydrogen peroxide does to hair. It's fantastic to clean surfaces that you want absolutely cleaning, clean. Then, of course, there's alcohol. And the cheap format is methylated spirits. It's alcohol mixed with a blue stain. And it's got some scented stuff in it as well to make it taste horrible um, so that people don't drink it. Um, but alcohol takes a long time to kill anything, and sometimes it takes three, four minutes, and by that time it's evaporated. So alcohol by itself is not very efficient. But if you combine it with other soapy things that break up fats and they break up the surface tension of these fatty layers, it becomes very, very efficient. And we've heard hundreds of times that Using soap and water for this virus is very efficient. Soap your hands, um, work it into your hands, around your fingers, keep your fingernails short for 30 seconds, even longer, make it a minute, then you rinse it up, rinse it off, and then comes an important part, don't use a normal towel because it stays wet and it spreads whatever viruses are still around from one person to the other. So try and use a bit of paper. You can use disposable paper towels or if you um, finance is an issue, get these huge rolls um, of, that we use in the garages and workshops or even use old um, printing paper that hasn't been used. In other words, any, any sort of paper to, to dry your hands off. This is what we call a farmer's cocktail. Now it's... It's, it's a simple design, but it's very, very efficient. Okay, And all you do is you take 25 millimeter, uh, milliliters of sunlight sick liquid, you add methylated spirits, and then you fill it up to one liter. And you put it in a spray bottle. You can clean surfaces with it. You can clean your hands with it. You can basically disinfect a lot of things. Disinfect specifically thinking of corona and the viruses that we are dealing with in these sim uh, in these um, presentations here. So you can wipe it off. Say you want to clean tables, chairs, kitchen areas. This is the stuff to use. And it's very affordable and it's cheap. And you could use it in your workspace. Um, you could use it for workshops. So this is just an idea that I think is really valuable. OK, of course, you will have guys that will say, look, how can this stuff work? This mixture I learned from my father, from my late father. He chucked it into his um, wipers in the car. And this will sound really crazy, but you know, these fatty bugs that sit on your windscreen, nothing cleans them off. Guess what? This stuff cleans them off, chop, chop. So it works for this sort of stuff. It's also... Obvious, if you have a frying pan that you've had steak in and you put it away in the evening and you chuck water in and you add some of that um, cleaner, by the next day, that oil will be soft and you can virtually wash it off or, or get rid of everything in a, with a soft sponge. So it's based on that principle. It's farmer logic. It's Namibian marker plan logic. This is the big one. This is deeply ingrained in our society. We go and meet somebody, and if you're friendly and socially normally adapted, you will stick out your hand, you will greet them. In fact, in Namibia, we touch them with a normal grip, a back grip, and then once again, a normal grip. Many, many times you give the guys a hug. Now, during the time that we, and this is the absolute first thing that must go, we cannot afford to do that. Bump them with your butt, bump them with your shoulder or whatever, or just say hi and give them whatever sign you want to. Um, but do not touch them. That is one really, really, really crucial thing. People might think you were, you were, you, I said something crazy nearly. You're a funny person, you're a fool. You, you, they, they might think you, 
you're not friendly to them, but quite honestly, it's for everybody's own gain. And so the handshake that we all know at this stage of our lives should be shaft. Cool. So now we go to the yellow part. Remember the two white ones are the old stories. I've sort of freshed them up for you, but now we go to immune function. And I want you to understand that Im the immune system, a functioning immune system, is basically the best and strongest defense you have to come out this situation with no permanent damage. Now, if I'm sitting in Namibia and I, I tell you these stories, people will say, where is the proof? What is your, what is your idea? Why, why do you think of these stupid things with soap? And then you come with these funny vitamins that nobody has any experience. That is absolutely not true. This guy, his name is Alex Vasquez. He's a triple certified doctor, homeopath, whatever. He has got an incredible knowledge. So if you ever want to learn something, go to his website, especially if you are a medical professional, your, your mind will boggle. Um, and he is completely down to earth. He has got all the research papers stacked up. I've got a book from him. It's called Inflammatory Mastery. You see the picture here on the left-hand side. That book contains 1,200 pages just on inflammation with references. This little one up here, you can hardly see that, um, but it's called Antiviral Nutrition. I've used that book to build a lot of this program. And I revere this guy. He is just amazing. And I think he is such an incredible resource to actually extend your knowledge if you are in a healthcare profession. So for the normal guy listening to this, this is where it comes from. This is his concept. You can see the little green ones, the little green questions. Um, remember, if you want to look at these pictures and you want to make sure you get all the ideas that I'm showing you, just pause the video or the YouTube video and you can look at it until you carry on. So here we are. And if you look at the bottom here, he says, obviously, the entire diagram model of disease ignores the entire immune system. Now, this is the normal response that we have in the media today. Very little is said about the immune system. Lots is said about medications and um, vaccinations and all the standard medical models. Quite honestly, I think the reason it is like it is, is financial financial interest because from vitamin c and common practices using simple models you don't make a lot of money so there might be another idea why it is like this dr vasquez has got a fantastic little book for healthcare professionals um, if you're interested in this sort of stuff please get that book um, it's not just for Corona, it's for any virus, for Epstein-Barr, for herpes, for endogenous virus, for, for whatever you want to do. It's just incredible. And if you want to get a really some, uh, excellent summary, go to this link and pick up a copy of this thing. By the way, it's also um, you also get a, a little app that you can download on your phone. The next resource is the International Society of Orthomolecular Medicine. Now, orthomolecular medicine is medicine that works with very high doses of normal vitamins. This is a website that is run and maintained by doctors that have got years and years and years of experience in vitamin therapy. Um, you will you see here, there's a workshop on Thursday, the 26th of March. Um, it's it's run from America. Um, it's an online workshop. Um, healthcare professions can join. It's a webinar. And they've got many, many resources on vitamin C, intravenous vitamin C, C therapy, which has been shown to be highly efficient against all sorts of viruses, um, even um, polio viruses and stuff like that and obviously also against uh, coronaviruses. So this is another resource. 
And this is why I'm saying it's not just Martin Vuch's nice ideas. Um, it is really solid science. Have a look at this and please read it again. Your doctors, your hospital, your government and medicines will help you, but they will not make you healthy. They will not defend you against the virus. They will not protect you 24-7 while you're sleeping, while you're digesting, while you're breathing and all that stuff. The only thing that can do that is your healthy immune system. So please focus on that. Listen to the government, listen to the nice stories and be absolutely sure that your own body with a healthy immune system is what you need to survive this time. Now, our modern life isn't always gentle to our immune system. Um, we are inundated with stresses and that is one of the reasons we have got all these chronic diseases, we've got so much cancer and so on. And I've spent the last 10 years looking into these, uh, into these uh, phenomena and into these diseases. I've lectured extensively overseas um, in that environment. So once again, if you nail your immune system, if you trip it up, it either goes to sleep, in other words, it doesn't function the way it should, or it overreacts. An overreacting immune system means you have got autoimmune disease, like hypothyroidism, you've got MS, you've got all sorts of funny autoimmune diseases. So once again, let's get back to balance the immune system and try by removing as many of these stresses as you can. Stress at works, emotions, yes, we know that the moment you are stressed, your immune system gets switched off. Let me repeat that. If a lion chases you, your immune system, your digestive system, and your logical thinking gets switched off. So, when you read all this stuff on the internet or on your social media, your immune system will be compromised. So, limit exposure to news on social media. Sit under a tree, go and braai with your friends, do whatever, just calm down. Viruses, yes, they stress our immune system. If they're too many, they suppress the immune system. Bacteria, heavy metals from your dental fillings, from makeup, from deodorant under your arms. Toxins in your bleaching agents, pharmaceutical drugs, they they nail your immune system. The stuff that we eat, the doom that we spray to kill the mosquitoes. Antibiotics, yes, they kill the bacteria in your stomach. And the bacteria are, are the neighborhood watch. They influence the 80% of your immune system. So if the bacteria in your stomach are happy, your stomach and your immune system is happy. And if you kill them with antibiotics, that thing crashes. Polluted foods. Old news, deficiencies, yes, we don't get enough vitamins. And then the last thing, man-made frequencies, is your cell phone, your Wi-Fi. The worst place is if you sit in a car and you talk on your phone, you like in a Faraday cage, the frequencies can't get out. They bounce back and forth through your body. The Bluetooth goes through you and it really, really nails your immune system. So. Get rid of these stresses as much as you can. If you can't, just be aware of them and limit them. Switch your cell phone off, if not off, but take it away from your bed. Switch your Wi-Fi off. Get into nature where there is no Wi-Fi and stuff like that. Good. Why would I pull out this one? Avoid all sugar. If you look at these two molecules, they are both ring structures with an extension of of little goodies that stick onto them. The one is fructose, which is a sugar that is found in fruit, and the other one is vitamin C. If you eat a lot of fructose, and the worst is modified corn starch or corn syrup, which is a mass-produced sugar that is in all cool drinks, in all processed foods, tons and tons and tons of the stuff. 
if you get that sugar into your system, it will display it will displace ascorbic acid. It will display vitamin C. So when you eat vitamin C and you eat sugar at the same time, guess what? It won't work. The vitamin C won't work. So stop eating white sugar, brown sugar. Stop eating excessive fruit. Now, I can hear people crying and saying fruit are, are great for you. Yes, they are great. But eat your apple until you feel full. Then the sugar is bound in fiber. It's a natural way of doing it. Don't go and juice your apple and don't go and drink a liter of fruit juice supposedly um, with no with nothing added because it'll be mainly sugary. It'll be a sugary sauce. Okay, that's my story for the sugar. I don't like sugar because it causes absolute havoc in your body. So here you are. Remove all the foods and habits that stimulate and nail your um, immune system. You will see them at the top. Dairy, yes, if you if you react to dairy and the normal cooking oils or hydrogenated oils, the margarines, processed foods is old news, yes, and GMO foods are terrible. Farmed meats are meats that are produced in big farming operations, like if you've got a feedlot or a chicken farm, where thousands and thousands of chickens are together. They will only survive if they're full of drugs and antibiotics normally, and then when you eat them, you get the same substances that they have been filled with. So be aware of that and try and minimize this. Let's look at lifestyle a little bit. Yes, we've talked about getting rid of junk foods. Very simple, eat, and eat less. Fasting and especially intermittent fasting, meaning that once in a day you only you only eat in an eight-hour period. In other words, you either skip breakfast, say, or you skip supper. That gives your stomach time to rest, your intestines time to to recuperate, to heal. It improves the bacteria in there. It makes you just more healthy. Where do you see it? If we look at our Kavango people that are still living in the rural district, I'm not talking about Rundu, these people only eat once or twice a day and they are very healthy sometimes. You won't see a fat person there and they will be laughing at Corona all the way. They've got no issue. Drink lots of water. Why? Your mucous membranes have to be wet to function properly and in Namibia we sweat a lot. Your body can only function very well when it's got lots of water in it. To make the water more valuable, put some coarse sea salt or Himalayan salt into it. You don't want that white salt that you have got on the table. That is only sodium chloride. You want the salt like Himalayan salt, pink salt. It's got the minerals as well. Move your body. Don't just sit in front of the TV. Do something. Bodies want to be moved. Then the radiation we've talked about. Go to sleep at 9, at ni uh, nine o'clock at night. Make sure your lights are dimmed. It's a dark room. It's cool. You can sleep well. It must be quiet. And you then wake up at 5. That's a normal way. And you know you've had a great sleep. Get into the bush. Get into the sun. I've said it already. And there's a little resource. Go to Dr. Axe's website. You'll find lots of amazing lifestyle um, tips and resources on his website. Supplements. Now we come to the big issues. <clears throat> I have summed up a whole lot of supplements that I believe are the most important ones for this specific situation. The number one in my world is vitamin D. If I had to go to an island and I didn't know what to take or didn't, could only take a few things, vitamin D supplementation would be my number one medical health support system. Shortly followed by vitamin C. Then I'm going to talk about a multivitamin mix. We in our practice have mixed our own. I will show it to you. And then of course zinc. Why zinc? Because zinc is highly, highly antibacterial, uh, anti antiviral. It kills viruses. It's involved in the whole immune mechanism that attacks viruses and that nails them. The same with magnesium. Um, magnesium is, a, is involved in the energy process of your body. It's absolutely essential for 
proper muscle contraction for making ATP in your mitochondria, which is your power generators. So magnesium is crucial. Selenium stops viruses from mutating. So it prevents them from changing into new forms. That means your immune system has got a better chance of holding on to them. L-lysine is an amino acid and it is involved in blocking virus replication. SAME and NAC, we will look at it in further um, slides. Okay, here we are on our favorite um, vitamin. It's vitamin D3. This is the most amazing vitamin um, and question is always, how do I take it? How much do I need? Best idea is to go and have your blood tested. Um, vitamin D should be between 80 and 100 nanograms per mole. That's, according to modern research, the best and optimal level. Traditionally, you will find that many laboratories say if you're between 30 and 40, you will be okay. I don't believe that's enough, and especially in a situation where you're trying to tackle a virus like Corona now. You want it optimized, so I would rather be near 100. For now, for this situation specifically, I would take 25,000 unit a day for maybe two months and then go back to one uh, 10,000 units a day um, just as a maintenance dose once this whole thing is over. For little kids, you can work on 500 units a day um, per year of age. Um, say if they're one year old, it's 500. When they're two years old, it's a thousand units a day, and so it carries on. And then it's one of the cheapest, most effective vitamins there is. The next one is vitamin C. Now we all know that in Namibia there's a very nice brand. You can see it there. And I'm not involved in any brands. I just find this this one very very nice. You can see there on the right hand picture, it contains ascorbic acid, 1800 milligrams per scoop, and it's also got some creatocyanins in it, which is grapeseed extract, which is another substance, by the way, that actually is, it works efficiently against um, vi um, viruses. You can see there preventing colds. Um, poor immunity, that's what they say, and it's because of those two together work extremely well. For adults, I would use two scoops a day. For kids, you can take um, 500 gra uh, milligrams, which is a third of a scoop, twice a day, and this one is easy use. You chuck it into a glass, you add some water, and it actually tastes nearly like sort of cool drink, so you can, you can use it very easily. Um, why why um, powder it mixes easily and why twice a day because vitamin C gets used up quickly so if you take a lot on one go five hours later it's worn out so it's better to take more doses over the day you know, spread it out over the day then there's a multivitamin that we've sort of developed why because I don't want people to have 20 little bottles on their bathroom so make it easy put it all together and this is what we've done we get it mixed for our practice and then people can buy it if they're interested in but it doesn't have to be this you can get a multivitamin from many many other um, providers from Solal, Solgar, um, even Adiva has got some I think so just go and have a look in your shop but just take a multivitamin. Zinc is a favorite. Zinc hates, no, viruses hate zinc, full stop. It nails them, it's, in, it's involved in killing viruses, and zinc deficiency is one of the reasons that you get colds easily. So this is cheap stuff, um, it works well, and you can see their cold sores, colds and flu, that's exactly what it's there for. It's not the only thing, so we've got a whole range, a whole different types of weapons that you're going to line up to make your body horrible for this virus. It doesn't want to be there. Magnesium. You can either buy it separately or it's also part of that Multimax. We call it Multimax formulation. 
So if you use that stuff, um, magnesium will be in there already. You can also use magnesium ascorbate, which is a mixture between vitamin C and magnesium. Works well, and you, you use it like in a combination. Selenium. Selenium is a little mineral <clears throat> that often is deficient. Selenium prevents viruses from mutating. So if a virus comes in and it gets pressure from the immune system, it mutates and then it changes. So then the immune system doesn't look like the original or it doesn't recognize the in initial virus. And the virus can attack it again. So but this selenium stuff stops it. So taking selenium, which is also part of the Multimax formulation, helps with this one. L-lysine is an amino acid, which you can buy in a bottle there from Solga. Uh, I think it's quite, quite a big bottle. Um, and then you try and take four tablets or two tablets a day. Um, it really suppresses viral replication. And acetylcysteine is really one of the most amazing substances. If you have got a cold and... Uh, um, and you've got lots of mucus, you take three of those pills a day and you can cough up all the dirty phlegm. It'll clear your lungs, it'll clear your sinuses. It, it inhibits bacteria, it inhibits the transcription factors that let bacteria multiply. And also it boosts glutathione, which is an antioxidant, which is the most important detoxing antioxidant uh, system in your body. So... This is an absolute um, favorite of mine. Okay, and then we've got s methionine. This stuff jumps onto your DNA and RNA molecules and it blocks, it methylates them. Methylating is like putting sticky tape or wax on the end of your shoelace. In other words, it can't unravel anymore. And if it can't unravel anymore, the viruses can't use it and they can't replicate anymore. So it it calms down virus replication. Um, and this is where SAMI is really a good thing to have as well. Right. Now you've done all these things that I've told you and you still feel as if you're getting a cold. And yes, what do you do? You might have corona, but you will probably just... Have it like a normal cold. Your chances are over 95%. So if you feel like a cold, treat it like a cold. Don't sneeze on your kids. Don't sneeze on your partner. It's not that they don't love that you anymore, but maybe it would be a good idea if you just slept in another bed for a while and not coughed on them the whole night. So if it is like a cold, treat it like a cold. And then we've got specific antiviral substances. The first one that comes to mind is colloidal silver. comes in spray bottles and you go in the evening or morning, evening, three times a day. You spray it right up your nostrils. You, you suck it into your throat and you can even put it into a liquid and gargle, which will be bacteria, viruses get killed by this stuff really quickly and really efficiently. And it costs... I think that bottle costs 55 or $60. It's, it's really af affordable. The next one is olive oil extract. Uh, it's made from olive leaves. And you can see there colds and flus, viral infections, bacterial. This is like a natural antibiotic. But it is great because it kills mainly pathogens. It doesn't really harm the good bacteria that much. You shouldn't take it for months on end. You should only take it for two weeks, give it a break, and then maybe you can take it again after a week or two. This is why I've only put it here. I don't want you to take it all the time. I think it's better if you only take it if you think you are in dire straits. Iodine. Rinse. Get your old betadine. Mix it into water. Gargle with it. You can even swallow a tiny sip. It's okay. You can rinse your sinuses with it. Um, make sure you're not allergic to iodine. And being allergic to crayfish and mussels doesn't mean you're allergic to iodine in all cases. It normally means you're allergic to seafood proteins. Um, iodine 
um, allergy is not as common as we think, but people often associate it with iodine when they're allergic to seafood. Anyway, be careful with that one, but use it when you can. And you can also disinfect surfaces because it's got a long-term action. It's a halogen, and halogens are like chlorine, iodine, fluoride. They kill bugs. It's stuff that they don't like. Here's a funny one, licorice. Licorice is highly, highly bactericidal. If you eat licorice, like 250 milligrams a day, it will kill viruses. It's effective against all sorts of viruses, even endogenous viruses that are inside the cells sometimes. Fulvic acid, you can ask your pharmacist. It's an efficient uh, substance for, for detoxifying to binding toxins in your stomach system and thereby improving your, your GI, your gastrointestinal system. Colostrum comes from milk. It's uh, like the serum from the milk. It's got lots of substances in that help your body fight viruses. And then lastly, probiotics. What is probiotics? You can get it in capsules from the pharmacy. Those are bacteria in dry format that go into your stomach. And as I've said to you, you've got the neighborhood watch. A normal adult has got between two and three kilograms of bacteria in their, in their stomach and in their intestines. And these bacteria normally are the ones that keep you alive. They like your mates. Um, if you eat lots of junk food, they become like jackal. If you eat lots of nice food, plant food, and so on, they will like springbok. They're the good guys. So you want probiotics to protect your gut, to have good bacteria there. And naturally in Namibia, you would see, Herrera speaking people, not the young ones with the cell phones, but the older generations, they would um, eat their umairi every day. Now, if you umairi a fan and you buy the modern umairi, it's got very few living bacteria in. It's got lots of sugar. So it tastes great, but it's got no of these beneficial benefits that we're talking about. You want old, sour-tasting umairi with live bacteria. Then if you go to the north, um, they've got fermented um, corn or fermented mahangu, which is also in containers and it also tastes sour. It's very, very healthy and it's very good for your health. So quite honestly, if you think you're in trouble, leave the big cities, go to your rural family and stay there for a couple of weeks and eat the foods that your granddad and your grandma made and you will be much better. Right, Namibia is the best place to be if Corona strikes. Why? Because we've got space, we've got nice people. Um, just be aware that what I've summed up here in this video is, I believe, it's probably the best summary of things to do and not to do. And if, if you em employ a couple of these tips, your chances of coming through this are so 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 great you will actually be fine so please be thankful that you are in namibia and that we've got all these things available um, even if you only take a couple of those you should be absolutely fine as i've said the last video here that'll be the third part is a series that will explain what your doctor can do and you could even use that to show your doctor and hopefully get him to look into these um, techniques and mechanisms and virus treatment protocols to possibly help you if you're really in trouble. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you learned something and stay healthy and enjoy the time. Enjoy the positive sides of Corona.